What do you feel? Do you feel something tugging on your nostalgia heartstrings? This is the Clockwork Pi in the gamer shell that was like enormously funded. They wanted $50,000 on Kickstarter. They got like 290, close to $300,000. So what this is, is it's a shell for the Clockwork. And it's got the little Linux joke on there, the game shell. And on the inside here, we have several different modules. So let's just break down the specs first and then I'll tell you what we can do with it. And then I'll show you the software. But before we get too deep into the video, this is a handheld emulation console. Um, with a bunch of indie games that are already pre-installed and you can throw your own ROMs on there for several different systems. Now, you're gonna watch to the end to see what you can play, how it works, how this little HDMI works out to your TV and all that sort of thing. A hobby board that's in here, it's the Clockwork Hobby Board. Comes with a gigabyte of DDR3 memory. It is a Cortex-A7, that's a quad-core running at one gigahertz. There's a Mali 400 GPU and they throw a 16 gigabyte micro SD card in there that already has Clockwork OS on it. You can upgrade to something bigger, but you're probably not gonna need to, at least not from my experience. They give you a 1200 milliamp hour battery. And then this unit does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, plus an AT Mega 168P. That's a programmable keypad. So let's go through all the, the modules right fast you get your keypad down here um, and this comes with uh, up down left right and then you've got your um, four buttons right here for most of you guys you're going to be like i need more buttons so i can play my super nintendo my playstation and maybe even some arcade games that require more like the arcade fighters and stuff well you're going to need to get this and this is the light key it gives you five extra buttons here it's a little extendable thing that snaps onto the back which makes the unit now have a strange shape. Before it was like a Game Boy, now it's like a Game Boy with a weird thing on its back and this Lego grip on here, you know, it sort of a, feels like Lego. The cool thing about this grip is you can pop this off and replace it wherever you like it. The bad thing is, is it does have a strange texture when you're holding it for long periods of time. It'll probably get used to it, be no big deal, but it's not as smooth as the other one. So if you're just playing Nintendo games and a few retro games, this will be just fine. But if you want to hook this up to some other Arduinos with the little output down here on the bottom, you can run a cable out of there and have the light key. Well, you got to have this back. So when you put this together, you get your 2.7 inch 320 by 240 screen and you put that into one of the little, I guess, plastic cases. They all come in this sheet. Um, when you pop these things out, sometimes it leaves a little residue because you have to pop all the plastic off yourself. Just use a knife and cut that off to make sure everything's nice and smooth all the way around. So you put your uh, 2.7 inch screen in there, 60 hertz by the way, and it's also IPS so it looks nice. Behind that, you put your uh, main board and then there's little ribbon cables that you route from here and there. One thing I wanna note when you're putting this together, make sure that you sort of leave most of the slack for the ribbon cable on the screen inside the plastic case for the screen or there's gonna to be too much slack on the inside here and there'll be nowhere to put it. So you have to kind of fold it back under itself. Don't give it a hard fold, just kind of lightly bend it and you'll be just fine. Uh, below that we have the battery and then on the other side there, we've got the, uh, the keypad and then just beneath that, there are speakers. You have to assemble this entire thing, but thankfully we've got some nice modern instructions. Modern instructions means no freaking words, or as few words as possible and as many pictures as possible. It's still really easy, you don't really need the words. Their marketing guys are geniuses. Highly hackable open source equipment. Everything says highly hackable and open source all over the place. They really wanted to emphasize how hackable this is. And, and since it's Arduino compatible and you can install all kinds of different things, but they didn't really, uh, I think, capture the essence of what it's like to play with this software. Tinkering and fussing. Those words are the words that I would use for playing with the software. Got it up on the uh, HDMI right here. There's an enormous input lag with HDMI. Tried it with a few different monitors, don't know why. Oh well. Anyway, when you hit menu, this is what you're greeted with on the screen. And it also is what you're greeted with on here. So you get settings, connect to your Wi-Fi. You got any Bluetooth devices, you can mess with those. Easy to deal with, but after you get connected to the Wi-Fi, you wanna go and update it. The Wi-Fi on this is very weak. You gotta put it right next to your antenna and not mess with it. And don't expect to be on this thing on Wi-Fi all the time. It, you, don't, you don't need to be on Wi-Fi anyway, but it's got a pretty weak Wi-Fi. It's a little slow for transfer too, but whatever. Put stuff on there once, you're done. You have a few emulators pre-installed. The Nintendo one was very easy to get to work. Uh, PlayStation, you gotta set up the BIOS. 
MAME, you gotta set up the BIOS, you gotta have the right emulator files for the Game Boy one, but just playing Nintendo games out of the box is extremely easy. Um, just throw the, your ROMs in a, in a file folder and uh, it's easy to go. You're like, what file folder do you do you throw them in? Well, right over here on the side, there's something called Tiny Cloud. You open that up and it just brings up a screen that shows you your IP address for this unit and it gives you your name and password so you can log straight in and drop music in the music folder, games in the games folder. It's super easy. There are some indie games pre-installed, these little open source games here. You know, if you like Bullet Hell, that one's pretty good. We have Cave Story pre-installed, which is like sort of a Metroidvania. It's one of the best Metroidvania games, and this is the free version uh, that has the more basic graphics, which I kind of actually like the graphics on that version a lot. Um, free Doom, but it runs okay. Pico 8, if you guys want to go online and buy the software system that is the Pico 8, you can buy it for like 15 bucks unless it's on sale, and then you just throw the files on here, and then you can play all the Pico 8 indie games. Most of those are free, but... Give the guys a donation who are making them. You got a music player on here that works. I, that's all, that's the best I'm gonna say for it. I don't know why anybody would use this. I threw some music on here and tried it out. It's, it's not gonna replace a phone. It's not gonna replace a portable music player, but if you wanna have some extra music and just listen to it, you can do it. I'm sure, why not? Most people are gonna spend a lot of their time in RetroArch. And RetroArch is a distro made for emulators. And there's lots of different emulator cores that you can go online and download. Um, there's lots of things you can do with it, but the version that comes on here is extremely vanilla. You'll have to customize it all yourself. You'll have to download all the emulators yourself, but it's very easy to do that if you're on Wi-Fi. Just go load core, and on the bottom, you can download different cores, and you can search through all sorts of different cores. When I say all sorts, I mean everything from like N64 to maybe even like newer stuff to really, really old stuff like the Atari. And this system can work with stuff up to like the PlayStation. Once you get to N64, it's a bit too slow because this is not as fast as a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B. It's not as fast as Simpy. It's not as fast as a lot of the uh, things out there that are bigger and have room for, you know, heat sinks and that sort of thing. But it's plenty fast enough for like Super Nintendo for some PlayStation games, not the super fast ones. I found those to be a little bit sluggish, like the fighting games and stuff were okay. But like all those turn-based strategy games and like, you know, our JRPGs and stuff work great. Um, I got it working with most of the old MAME games. Uh, CPS2 games, which are like the Capcom fighting games, those work great. Um, you know, like Vampire Savior, fine. Street Fighter, sure, works great. Street Fighter Alpha, yeah. As far as Genesis, sure. Atari, those are all gonna work just fine. Uh, Neo Geo, you'll have to do a little bit of fussing. Some of the games are gonna run okay. Make sure you have all the BIOS files in this, in this video. I'm not gonna tell you how to do all that. You're gonna have to do all the fussing on your own because the attention spans of YouTube. I'm not going to sit here and go through all of that. I also want to note that Scum VM games, which are like the LucasArts adventure games, Monkey Island, The Dig, Loom, Full Throttle, Day of the Tentacle, those games actually work on here. It's a little frustrating to do it, you know, portable, but I guess you could figure out some way to rig a mouse up to this. I haven't messed around with that yet. Super Nintendo is one of the main reasons why I have this, so let's, let's load up a game here. This is where the games are kept, if you guys are wondering where everything was kept. So go to Slash, go to Home. CPI for Clockwork Pi. And then there's games. You may not see all of the hidden folders and the hidden files and stuff, but I have it turned on on mine to show all the hidden stuff. And then just everything that this is like everything I've thrown on there myself. All the games that I own uh, copies of, and these are my uh, backups. I just love the music in Blackthorn. It's got such good music. Okay, if I was designing something like this, I would design it more from like a usability standpoint rather than a marketing standpoint. I feel like they really did go all out and make this so that like when you see this, it hits you, you want it. And you know, everything about it just screams, hey, we're open source, that's pretty cool. Hey, it's hackable. All the kids who love to say like, yeah, I hacked this myself. They're going to be in, you know, really into this. And it also hits all the people who love that nostalgic Game Boy shape. So if I was building it, I would not make it this shape. I would make it uh, more like the uh, PSP or something like that, where it's uh, more of a uh, horizontal rectangular instead of a vertical rectangle. And I would put L and R on the top of the damn thing. So that would not sell as well. It, this marketing would not work as well. So this is going to be the best for, for sales for sure. But if you guys ever make another one with like a three or three and a half inch screen or even bigger. But really for me, what this is going to end up being is Portable, Turbo Graphics, Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and arcade game player. Now, when you hook this up through the um, the micro HDMI on top to different screens, 
there's a lot of lag. I'm not sure why. It, it, the games were running slower than I expected. Um, even when I forced the resolution in in RetroArch down to 320 by 240, it still felt a little sluggish. The Nintendo played okay, but PlayStation was completely unplayable at like just a few FPS a second. It's like playing in slow mode. Um, I don't want to have to go in and mess with this. There may be some settings that I can can, can fix, but um, I noticed when playing it on the handheld unit, it ran pretty good. Playing it on TV, not so hot. So there's that. If you want expandability for extra controllers, they give you some options in the box. Uh, otherwise, you can use Bluetooth and set those up on your own. But really, this thing can be anything you want it to be. I mean, you don't even have to put it in the game shell. I don't know why you would buy the game shell. You just buy the Clockwork Pi main board. But you guys can do pretty much anything you want with this. And I'm sure people are doing all kinds of different things with it. But if you want something that's really simple out of the box, well, yeah, you can play the indie games and the Nintendo games and a few other things out of the box. If you really want to maximize the usability of this, you got to mess around with RetroArch and you've got to like play with some BIOS and fuss and get things to work. But once you do, it's pretty freaking cool. Now, the speed that you get out of this for the money is also like a little like, well, you're paying for the convenience, the shape. Um, and all that so that that's going to be factored into the price because it is really a great unit it feels nice in your hands it's made well once you snap it together it does not feel like you just put it together it feels like a unit from a factory so yeah this is a really nice unit and worth the money from that standpoint if you're looking to play in 64 games and stuff you know maybe not who knows not going to replace your home consoles not going to replace your computer but super cool to carry around with you just wish it was a little bit of a different shape, but for most people, they're going to love it. While you guys are online, be sure to head over to EpicPants.com. Grab yourself a t-shirt and get yourself one of these mice as well. Let us know what games you're playing with this. Let us know what other emulators you guys like to play and uh, make some recommendations in the comments. See you guys later. land.